In this video, I'll be using the following products. Links are in the description. Milliput has kindly provided these products for me to use in this video. It is a company based in the UK and produces this amazing epoxy putty that can be used for virtually anything. It's easy to use and easy to sculpt. It is waterproof and sets rock solid. It also comes in many different colors. If you want to learn more about this product, be sure to visit their website. I always make sure I paint my figures with Arteza's premium acrylic paints. Honestly guys, the quality of this paint is really good. So I suggest you check the links in the description to find out more and order some for yourself. I'll be using masking tape, PVA glue, sculpting tools, paint brushes, lots of super glue, tons of time and lots of patience and a glass of water. Now we're all set, we can start this project. Hello everyone, this is Marco and welcome back to my channel. Today, I will be sculpting a Velociraptor based on Jurassic Park. You could consider this as a Gen 2 Raptor sculpt from me because it is in the same exact scale as the Mattel figures. Now, if you've been following me for quite a while, you know exactly what I'm doing right now. I am making the core of the sculpt using masking tape. I know it's a bit of an unusual procedure, but I find it works really well. Some people use aluminium foil, tin foil or armature wire. But I personally prefer using masking tape as it actually sticks together really well because I roll it with the sticky side out. Now what I did is I found a lovely render of this Raptor, printed it out in the scale that I wanted it. Then I just build my masking tape core on it so I get all the proportions correct. Once the body's done, I cover it with masking tape with the sticky part down this time. And once that's done, I cover it with PVA glue. Then I make all the limbs. I'm making the left leg and then the right leg and then the arms. I again cover it with masking tape and then PVA glue too. I apologize if I haven't uploaded any sculpting videos recently, but I've been pretty busy with collaborations and making all of those rubber rexes. Now is the rubber raptor's turn and this raptor right here is the first of many. Indeed, I am planning to sculpt each and every version of the raptors. Now I'll be sculpting using this super fine white Milliput. It is a two part epoxy putty that is finer than the standard one, which means I can sculpt smaller details, which is perfect for smaller figures like this Raptor. As you can see here, I'm starting to sculpt the head. I first added the material and now I'm sculpting the details with a toothpick or a cocktail stick. I'm slowly adding more and more material so I can get all the shapes as close and accurate as possible. And this is the head sculpt done. I'm pretty happy with it, let me know what you think. In fact, I'm so satisfied with it that I'm moving on to the body. So what I did is I glued the head that I sculpted onto the body. I added the milliput all around the body, smoothed it out. And now I am sculpting all the fine details by scoring lines and just making the skin texture and the muscles pop out. So this Milliput Epoxy Putty roughly takes about four hours to cure. It starts getting a bit hard already after about an hour, but it will completely solidify and become as hard as a rock within four hours. What I forgot to mention earlier is that later on I will be molding this figure using silicon, which will help me make all the rubber copies I need. I already sculpted an arm and put it in the body, so I can actually sculpt around it. But don't worry, I will show you how I sculpted the other arm later on. I also stuck two pegs in the hips, so I know exactly where the legs go later on. It's just a reference point, so I can get the figure's proportions and balance right. Because yes, indeed, I designed my figures to be able to stand, which is very important to me. Right here, I'm sculpting all the folds in the skin that start from underneath the arm, go around the chest and then end up on the spine. The next thing I'm sculpting is the legs. Now, I decided to speed this up because it's just a case of covering the leg that I already made with tape with Milliput and then just adding the claws. I really like to make my figures look very muscular, so I'm using this tool to score all the muscle lines in the thigh, and then smoothing it out with a brush dipped in water. 
Yes, Milliput can be smoothed with water, which is brilliant. It works just like clay. I'm using this fine tip tool to score all the folds in the skin on the thigh and sculpting all the scales and scoots on the feet and the toes. And once that's cured, I am showing you how I sculpted the other arm. I'm following the exact same procedure as the leg. I'm just covering it with Milliput then scoring the muscles sculpting the folds in the skin and sculpting the scales and the scoots on the fingers and this is the sculpt finished i am going to take apart this model so i can mold all the parts individually the legs the arms and the head are all going to be molded separately once i created some box molds and put the silicon and took out the parts of the silicon mold i use a very special kind of rubber it's a casting rubber that is hard and flexible which is what I use to cast all of my Raptor figures from now on. Do you remember the model cars that have actual rubber tires? Yes, that is the same exact material in which I'm casting my Raptors. So they are extremely durable. They can bend and they won't tear or break. This is seriously my favorite material by far. Cause look, you can actually move the legs and the arms. It is paintable, so the paint won't chip either. And look, you can bend the neck as well. Isn't that cool? It actually feels like a proper solid toy. A bit like the Schleich and Papo figures, but more rubbery. So now I am painting using Arte's acrylic paint. As I mentioned before, this material is completely paintable. And that's what I love about it too. I can make durable toys with also a nice, accurate and realistic paint job. I guess you're thinking now, where's the catch? There must be some sort of downside. And unfortunately, there is a downside and it is the price. This material is quite expensive, but you know what? I think it is worth it. This is what I've always been wanting to do since I was a little kid. I would make my own toys, but I never had the right material. And finally, I now have it. Anyway, enough about that rubber now, and I'll talk about how I painted this figure. I started with a whitish beige color for the underside of the belly, the tail, and the jaw. Then I used an orangey brown for the base color, and then a darker brown for the top, and the stripes. I did mix in with the darker brown some black just to make it a bit darker. I know I usually don't use black at all because it kills colors, but in this case it actually worked pretty well. You can see now that I'm making all the stripes on the arms and the legs. I mixed some dark grey for the feet and the hands, then I painted the claws black. I made a nice green colour for the eye and I used a cocktail stick to draw the pupil. I did however use a gloss varnish to consolidate everything. That is important because you don't want the paint to rub off, so the varnish actually adds a nice flexible protective layer. I'll let you enjoy the rest of the video without my voice in the background. Until the surprise at the end, which uh, you should definitely see, because I'm going to talk about that. Here it is, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. You can buy this figure from my Etsy. And this is the surprise I was talking about. I have designed a lovely packaging for it and you can buy it from me.
I am making a limited amount right now and it could be yours. So go check out the links in the description. And look, these are my rubber Rexes next to them. And I think they go really well together. This is a little sneak peek of what's to come. I'll be releasing the other Raptors on my Etsy when I upload the videos. So please stay tuned and I'll see you later. Hey, you can also buy my figures and my paintings as well as some sick merch on Etsy. Yes, I have an Etsy shop and the link is in the description. I would like to give a massive thank you to all of my Patreons. Seriously guys, your support really does mean the world to me as it helps me do what I love for you. You help me buy materials and most of all, you give me a helping hand with improving the quality of the content of my videos. Even if it's just a small donation, every little helps. If you like my videos, please press the like button. And you could uh, consider subscribing. It's free. Oh, and don't forget to press the notification bell button. Because you don't want to miss any of my new stuff, right? I'm going to say bye now because when you got to go, you got to go. I will see you in the next one.